Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter, and I'm here with the March 2023 Colour Combination Challenge. And I'm not overly comfortable with the word challenge. Um, I'd like to think of it more of play or experimentation. However, this month, I think it's a real challenge. So, um, the criteria is to make something in any medium you wish that actually has predominant colours of, and this month is, it's um, dark red and dark green. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure I've achieved that already because I don't have really dark red or dark green, although I can adjust the colour slightly because that's what I'm going to have to do. Um, you're also, besides using dark red and dark green, which are these two which I'm going to use, you're allowed to use a white, you're allowed to use black, and you're allowed to use a metallic, and I think I'm going to go with this bronze. Don't know. Let's hold a thought on that one. I've also pulled in some Prussian blue because I think I can take the green back a little bit and I can take the red back a little bit. If I add a touch of blue to them, have to be careful it doesn't go purple though. So um, I'm going to be working on a piece of unwanted 12 by 12 as I usually do for these. Now I normally work with my scraper and I usually work my plastic card to make sure this all works this way without a plate. Today I'm going to have to use a plate. Um, I'm struggling with how to make this one start. I'm how struggling with how to make this one end. Um, I do want to bring in one other element that I don't normally do, but I am going to introduce you to a new um, mask design that I've just designed that was launched about two weeks ago and I haven't got around to doing it and it's called Little Leaves. comes in three sizes. That's a five by seven. What's that? I think that says 9 by 12 and this, no, that's a 9 by 12. What's this one then? Hell if I took it out of the packing really, wouldn't it? Um, 8 by 10. So I'm going to be, and it looks like this. So I thought because there's a dark green involved, maybe I can use this as sort of a leaf motto without it being too much about leaves. Now, my biggest problem struggling with this has been... What do these two colours say to everyone? They say Christmas. I do not want to do Christmas. Now, when myself and Paolo were putting together this challenge, um, we did discuss whether to move this colour combination to July and call it in Christmas in July. Um, I vetoed that because I said that's a bit too obvious. Maybe I might live to regret that one. However, I did feel that we needed to challenge ourselves a bit more and do it outside the box. Now, um, also mentioning Paolo and myself here, we do not choose these colour combinations. These colour combinations are based on the requests from our subscribers and comments in Facebook groups. So we're not to blame for this one, guys. Right, so let me get started. I need to put something down on this now. I'm going to be using, I've got my 12 by 12 here. I've got my 5 by 7. I've got a 4 inch brayer. And over there is a piece of paper that I do my roll offs on. Now, I do apologise. It's a very overcast not a great day here in Wales. Hopefully the colours can be fine. I'm crossing my fingers that the camera can do what it does, but it's not a great day. And this video has to launch in, let's see, um, 10, 10 hours time. And I've not even filmed it yet. So there you go. Right, so I want to make a bit background and I pretty much want to make a background that's not going to be too dark. So I think I'm going to use some of my colour theory and I'm going to take that off there for a start. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of my red, I'm saying a little bit here, just a pea-sized piece, and I'm going to take a little bit of the green. Now, we both know, or we should realise, green and red usually make brown. That's my intent here. So I've got a bit of a palette knife. I just want to get this round to make... It needs to be a colour that's not the colour that's on the front. So I'm not sure whether it's going to... Actually, it's not as brown as I thought it was going to be. That's actually a good thing. I want something that plays to the colours that we're using, but that doesn't have to be exactly that colour. And then what I want to do into that is I want to add some white because I want a paler version of that colour. What is it with me and paints? I always forget to go through and clean my paint lids out before I start work. So again, I'm not looking for green. I'm not looking for red. I'm looking for a colour that I can just add into the background. So that's giving me a sort of... I'd say almost like a mulberry type colour. 
with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on. Let's just wipe my palette knife off because I don't need it on there. Um, I'm going to put it on here and I'm going to mix in straight away. I'm going to put in some of the bronze. Now the bronze is not, oops, the bronze is not going to say that metallic in the background because it's going to be blended in with everything else. But it might add some interesting notes into this. Let's call it that. Right. So I'm just going to bray this out and just get this onto the background. So normally I would put into the background, let's take that bit of stuff off there. I need some kitchen towel. Bear with me, I'll lean across and get a bit of kitchen towel. Otherwise I'm going to have stuff all over the place. Um, normally I make the background um, from one of the colours that's going to be in, um, in the final piece. Like it would be the dark green or it would be dark red, but I'm not 100% certain that's going to work in this instance. So I just want to cover up the snowflake design on this one. And by that, I'm just going to pop this down and give it a bit of a rub. That's my Baron gone. Okay. Um, this piece of equipment, by the way, is called a Baron. I ordered it from Etsy from an American wood turner called Anthony. Anthony, hello if you're out there. Um, his Etsy store is Cody Woodcraft, and, and that's where I ordered this from. And I love it, and I use it all the time. Right, so I'm looking just to do a bit of a concealment of the background, and I've done that. Now, it's a very flat colour. I don't mind that at this point, because I think this whole thing is going to become quite grungy and quite dark very quickly. So what I'm going to do is I've got stuff on my plate here. I'm going to add a little bit more white to this because I can get a different shade of this colour by adding a bit of white onto it. If it hasn't dried up too much on me already. No, it hasn't. It's got a little bit on there. And this is definitely going to have to be a layer builder. So I'm just going to bring in pieces of this. And what I'm trying to do is add interest. I'm... I think my final piece is definitely going to be an abstract piece. It, there's, there's no way I'm going to avoid Christmas unless I keep it really abstract, in my mind anyway. So now I'm going to come in, I'm going to touch this down, and this is my kissing technique, which if you know me, you've seen me do it a hundred times before. I'm looking to create something that's... Don't tap on the 5x7 as well, well I've got it there. I want just interest in the background. As you can see, I'm getting quite a painty sort of feel to that, and I'm, that's kind of where I'm going. Right, normally I would lift all of this off onto spare bits of card, but I'm just using tissue paper today just to keep, keep things cleaned up. And also it means I'm not creating tons and tons of pieces that I feel obligated to finish, because today, as soon as this finishes filming, I'm going to have to go into editing mode and then upload mode and that's that's a fair few hours work ahead of me just there and it's already two o'clock in the afternoon um why didn't i do it earlier i tell you why because i've been contemplating how to deal with color combination for about a week now um i thought oh it's going to be an easy one mm, wrong not going to be an easy one it, for me this is just this is a bit of a struggle but we're fine we will make this work right so I have this in the background. Now what I want to do is I want to build up um, grungy but not so grungy that I lose everything. And I, that will sound very peculiar as I just said that. It even sounds peculiar to me. Um, I want to come in, I want to put elements in the background. I usually want like working from light to dark, but as you can see I've already started dark. So I want to make sure that I don't lose stuff. Now, I think before we even start, I want to put something into the background that's really going to play with an optical illusion in this one. So I think I'm going to pull in the red, and this is Crimson Red by Arteza. As I said, it's the darkest red I had. Um, if I add blue to this, it will knock it back slightly, but I don't want it to become purple. So I'm going to put a little bit of per uh, Prussian Blue. Let's take the nasty bit off the top of my Prussian Blue. And I'm only adding any that will come out, to be honest. Right, 
the merest, merest little bit. I mean, you can see there the ratio, and that might even be too much. So I'm just going to use my brayer to mix this round a bit. And I don't mind if it's not fully mixed on the plate. That might actually work to my favour. I'm just going to clean my brayer off because I don't need that much. And what I'm going to do in this instant is I'm going to use this as a stamping block. And I've got this wooden stamp by Doe Crafts. Um, these come in sets, different sizes. I use them all, all the time. So I'm just going to pick up paint and I pop it on here. Now I'm looking for random. And anyone who knows me knows that that's a pretty big request for me. But I want to just build something in the background. Let's put one on the side there. I like things going off if I can do them. Right, immediately I'm going to have to stamp that off and then I'm going to take a bit of a damp cloth. It will never be used for inks again. Well, I say never, it should never be used for inks again because I always use it for paint. So I want to put that to one side. I'm leaving that to dry a second on there. I've got some yumminess on here so that can come straight back off onto a bit of tissue paper. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build up a background on the plate before I start working with the ultimate design. So it's a bit weird, I know, but it's I'm hoping it's going to work. And you'll also note that currently I haven't used any of the required colors yet. And part of that is because um, the requirement is that the two colors that are chosen and there are going to be some months where it's more than two colors that the two colours chosen are actually predominant in the feet in the final vision. So, right, where do I want to go from here? You can see I haven't really planned this and I didn't know whether there was a way to plan it. Right. I think I'm going to do something similar, but I'm going to come in with a bit of white now. Now I've got this unmounted stamp. Don't ask me where it's from. Couldn't tell you, but you know me, I love my diamonds and I like like stuff like this. So this is going to be on here now. And I think I'm going to use a more of a heavy bodied white because I think if I use a liquid one, I'm probably going to lose it in that it will just be too thin and it's viscosity. So I'm just going to pray that out a little bit. I'll leave it on my bread just in case I need a refill. I'm going to lay this down and I'm very much today using my five by seven as not only a palette, but as a ink pad as well. I don't mind if it's on here a bit squiffy. I don't mind if it's on here not exact. I don't mind if it overlaps some of the squares. All of actually I quite like that overlapping some of the squares. Let's put another one there. Another ooh, okay, it's going there then. It decided where it was going. I think a little bit down there. Again, I'm going to come in immediately and just clean this off or else all those little pieces in the middle are going to get filled with paint. And eventually I'll lose it. I don't know where this came from, so I couldn't buy another one. But that doesn't mean I couldn't use a stencil instead. All right, got gunge on my 5x7, another bit of tissue in here. I'm using my 5x7 as almost like an ink pad for stamping onto my final piece can be quite a wasteful process unless you save um, the excess paint for something. And what I'm doing here is I'm just putting it onto tissue paper because I know I use tissue paper all of the time for collage work. If I wasn't filming this video, I would be using um, postcard backgrounds, tags. I'd be using ATCs, which is artist trading cards to those who are not familiar with those. And I would pick the paint up. But this sort of stuff is great for backgrounds um, when I'm working in collage. Right. I'm letting this sit a little bit just to think about itself. Don't need that on there. So that can, that can come off now. <laughs> it's funny because I'm liking my roll off sheet better than I like in the piece I'm working on. Right. Where am I up to? So it's choice of, do I wait or do I try and pull some of this off? I think looking at the shine of this, it's a little bit, it's a little bit um, wet still. So I think we're going to move this out of the way and I'm going to put it to one side just so I can pull in 
the 12 by 12 and actually work on this directly. Now I do want to come in and I do want to sponge stuff through. I want to do some mark making on here. I want stuff, as I said, I think this might end up looking reasonably grungy, maybe industrial, not sure. Right, I've got this bit of netting. Okay, now I have this bit of netting. I don't know what this held, actually. It might have held soaps or something. It's quite fine netting. And what I want to do is I want to do the same with um, this as I did with the other one, except I'm going to do this in black. Just a little touch of black. I don't want much black. As we know, me and black goes a very, very long way. So let's just pull this over my prayer off. Right now I know that I'm going to get this all over my hand so there may be a moment I've got to clean up so I'm just picking this up and I'm using my other hand to press it down. It was so light it hardly even came out. Let's see if I can get this to work on here. Now I usually sponge through this. Right that's not working. Okay note to self that doesn't work. So I think I need to go to this one which is the one I would normally use. Actually, what we'll do is get that off my hand, so bear with me a second. So, um, these colour challenges are run in a Facebook group called um, Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artists. And the group is owned and run by PM Artist Studio out of Texas, America. Um, I actually am one of their designers. I design stencils, masks, and I'm going to leave a little question mark because there's things in the future that you don't know about yet that I'll also be designing. So excited about that. Um, if you find it on Facebook, and I will endeavor to put a link into the description box below, which is just down there. Um, that's better. I wanted something really fine in here. Um, if you join the group, it's a wonderfully supportive group of like-minded artists. We're all very generous with our knowledge, um, our support. It's, it's a wonderful group. It really is a wonderful group. And they do lots of swaps. They do lots of challenges. They do sharing of knowledge. So if you pop over there, you will have to answer two questions to get in. Believe me, the questions are so easy. They're not at all soul searching they're not all at all going to breach anyone's privacy they're just just questions so it's just to make sure that you're not someone who's maybe a robot trying to search down groups or stuff like that right that's in there now just hold this up because i'm not sure you can see it it's really fine in the background that's what i was looking for right did i clean this brayer off i did there's that bit of tissue paper gone. Let's take this off this five by seven. It's funny because today is the last day of February. Um, and the launch is, actually is it tomorrow? What day is it today? No, actually the launch is not tomorrow. It's the day after tomorrow. It's just, I'm traveling for work tomorrow. So I won't be able to do this tomorrow, but yes. So the Colour Combination Challenge launches on the second of every month um, and Paula and I try our best to do it before we launch so that we can help inspire, help people, liking that, um, help people have some examples of what to work against or what to work towards. Um, just on an inspirational note, and it's funny because Paula and I have been messaging each other all morning going, what are you doing? How are you dealing with this one? So, so there you go. I like a good challenge. Right, so I've got that on the go there. I'm liking where that's going. Is this dry? I think that might be dry. Might be dry enough to do anyway. Right. Now I need to lift this off here. Now I was considering using... Um, something like a matte gel medium to lift that off but I don't want to put matte gel medium on it and then have to keep building on top of it so I need to think of some way of lifting this off and onto here and I'm thinking I need something that's got a bit of red in it and is actually a transparent so bear with me right I've got transparent red iron oxide now this is going to make this look ever so slightly orange 
um, in because as you can see by the swatch here, it is orange. It well, it's a red, but it's an orange if that makes sense to anyone at all. Always put your finger over the top when you shake something, because goodness knows we don't know how much is going to burst out the end. So I'm going to put this on my palette. I would normally put this directly onto my plate, but I don't want it to be swamped with colour. So put that to one side. Remember that one because I use it. Now what I'm going to do here or hope to do is I want to put almost a glaze on here and then I want the glaze to be able to lift off. Did I not clean my bray? I thought I cleaned my bray. I want the glaze to lift off what is on this plate. I'm not happy with that. I thought I'd clean my brayer. Maybe the iron oxide is just liquid enough that it's lifting it. So I'm going to pop this over the top and give it a good barren down to make sure it's fully in contact. Now this could be one of the times, guys, that I don't succeed. I'm not setting myself up to fail. I'm just being honest with you because I'm not I'm not feeling overly confident in this one. Let's just have a bit of a clean up on this one over here. Now I can normally rescue most things, but there are some times when you just have to put white completely over the top of everything and start again. However, there's also something to be said that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And what I create today, I may not like, but someone else may think it's the absolute bee's knees and love it. So, I have to be honest about that. I just do not know. Right, I don't know whether turning it over is going to help us. Okay, it's a bit darker than I was expecting it to be, but we've yet to do the final layers. So, lift this off. Right, okay, that's not bad. Now, it's not Christmas. It was never meant to be Christmas. I'm looking for something a little darker. A little playful. Now I haven't added green yet and I haven't added um, the dark red although this is dark red. Now when I come in with the brighter red it will stand out beautifully on that. I'm thinking this green however is not because this is forest green was the only green I could find. Um, I do have sap green which is quite it's a vibrant green. I mean it's got quite a punch to it. Um, I also want to say it's, it's transparent or semi-transparent, where am I? Okay, symbol on the back, it's semi-transparent. So I think I'm going to be adding um, the green, but I'm going to be adding it with um, a little bit of blue. And I'm wondering whether I want to add a little bit of yellow. Maybe not. Right, let's play with the forest green for a start. Yes, let's play with the forest green. Right, I'm going to bring in my one of my new stencils, uh, masks, and this one is the 8x10, only because I don't want it to be too big. Um, and I'm going to do this in, in patches on here, and I'm going to bray directly through. So I'm not going to the edges, I'm using this as a stencil, not a mask. So this forest green, if I remember, is quite blue. Well, it feels quite blue. Um, my one danger would be that it looks a bit like holly green. So, and I want hints of this. I don't want it to be a dominant. I just want bits of it in here. Just to give myself some patterning. And in true Kerry fashion, we're going to have three. That needs to sit over there because I will put that down anyway. Now I'm immediately just going to put this straight on top and hopefully it'll the paint hasn't dried. It's not a dry day. It's a wet day. It's a cold day. So I don't expect it to have dried out. I'll let that sit for a second. And where's that bit of tissue paper? Let's clean up. Clean up the green off there. Clean up the brayer over there. Now I'm I'm of the thinking that if I'm using blue, it's a primary colour. 
if I'm using yellow, it's a primary colour. But because I'm using green, green is made of blue and yellow, I'm thinking I could use blue or yellow. Um, I keep leaning towards yellow because I want to add a bit more oomph to this design. Right, okay, that gave me what I wanted. I wanted a hint of green in a textural pattern, and I've got a hint of green in a textural pattern. Am I loving this? Currently, that would be a no. Um, but we've not, not got there yet, so Kerry needs to back off a bit with his opinions. So I'm going to use some of the bronze now, because I want to bring the bronze in. Um, almost like, how do I say it? I almost want it to be streaky. Um, I don't want a lot on my brayer. What I want to do is I want to just pull it down and I'm using my brayer on a slight angle so that I can pull pieces in without it taking over. Now remember I did say at the beginning I want this to be marginally abstract. Well I probably didn't say the word marginally but in my mind I said it. Right, now the only trouble with metallics is, ah, uh, is, oh, uh, I've got my English wrong. It could start looking Christmassy because it's shiny. Right. Okay, I'm all right with that. Let's clean this off here. Now there's bits of grunge on here. I do not mind that being on there. Just want to clean up my palette so that it's not, it's not got muck on that. Okay, right, so where am I at with this? Okay, we asked for dark, we've got dark. Have we got gr dark green and dark red yet? No, we've got dark green. We haven't got the dark red, and it's not dominant enough for me yet. Sorry, I'm just thinking at the moment, guys. I just want to get my brain around where we're going with this. I think I need to add something on top of this. Right, I think I'm going to use the corrugated cardboard. Um, I'm so tempted to reach for bubble wrap, but I don't think bubble wrap is right for this. I also want to come in, I'm going to use some of the sunflower yellow on this, because I know the sunflower yellow will pull out the green and the green. It'll pull out the green within the, pull out the yellow within the green. It's what I'm trying to say. Words are hard today, words are hard. Now I don't want a large amount of this. I just want pieces of it. I don't even know whether it's really going to show. See, it's just subtle, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for subtleties. You'd be surprised that when something is actually not visible completely, how much it pulls into the foreground when you actually add other colours to it. I'm not happy with this line that's appearing down there. I think I'm going to have to do something about that. Right, so where are we at? Yeah, this line is going to really annoy me. I'm going to have to do something about that now before I keep adding more and more and it, it compounds it into being an issue. this off right just having a bit of a thoughtful time here right I obviously need to add red to this can you see I'm in shot hopefully I'm in shot hopefully I was in shot for all of that right I want something struggling struggling I'm being drawn to this. I don't know if it's because the colour matches that perfectly. This is just a piece of textured wallpaper. And I'm wondering whether I can pull something off here to add on to here. What's the colour? It shouldn't be red or green. It can't be white. Green will be wrong. I don't know that red. Let's do a bit of a tester. I just, I'll, I'm just uncertain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of the red on here. 
and I'm going to test my theory out and I'm going to do it onto my brayer off sheet because that way it's not wasted because I'm using my brayer off sheets for another project so all I'm going to do is I'm going to press this into my paint and then press it onto my brayer off sheet right so it gives me something it doesn't give me a lot maybe I need a thicker layer of paint Funny enough, I wish I could transfer that across. That would be quite nice, wouldn't it? Um, maybe it needs to be a thicker sort of paint. I'm wondering whether I just need to add more paint because it didn't have enough to pick up. Well, that's quite a hefty amount of paint on there. Right. I think I'm just going to go for this, I think. Just because my gut is telling me it's the right thing to do. So I'm going to lay that down, pick this up, pop it down. It would be nice if I popped it down straight. Yes, it is, but it needed more paint. Right. Oh, and it needed a bit of a rub as well. I'm going to take the opportunity to bray this out just a little bit again. Now, I'm not looking for a perfect pattern, remember. Not that I think I would get it with the wallpaper. But I would like that detail mixed into this quite a lot. So it just goes to show, guys, you don't need a whole pile of equipment. Maybe just the odd little element added with something you have in the home is enough. Right, this side here just needs a little bit along the edge. And that bit needs a little bit down there. Right, let's put this towards there. Now, I won't get rid of this because the more paint builds up on it, the thicker it gets, the more interesting it gets. So I need to get this off, off here because goodness knows there's enough paint there for another couple of backgrounds, but as I'm filming, it's not going to become another couple of backgrounds. It's going to become a bit of tissue. Right, I'm not upset with that's gone. I'm liking that now. That, besides anything else, it's given me the red already. I'm looking at this thinking I need to pull some of that white forward. The question is, what do I pull it forward with? What else have I got that would really give me interest? Now, I don't want to go very blocky, as I don't want blocks of colour. I want, I want a fine network of colour. Just sort of peel that off there so we can have a better look. Right, so we're getting a very oldie worldy. I would definitely say this is not looking like Christmas. I've got the red on there. I, want, I do want to put some white. What have I got that could put white on there? Bear with me. Okay, I've got this silicone stamp. No idea where this came from. It was in my drawer. Um, this is in the drawer. I'm wondering whether I put some brickwork into this in white. You're probably all being horrified at the moment, going, what the hell is he doing? I can share with you that I'm actually thinking the same thing here, guys. What the hell is he doing? Um, I'm kind of thinking we've got floral. I was going for abstract. So is this going to be an abstract garden because I've got flowers in it and it's green? Uh, this obviously has not been used by me before. So let's go with a little bit of caution. Okay, it's not... It's not bad. I just needed to bring the white back into the foreground again. Right. Give this a bit of a... Oh, actually, no. I just want to... This here is going to really annoy me that it's a straight line. So if I can just increase it on an angle, there you go. So it's not straight anymore. Right, give this a little bit of a wipe. 
Right, so if we're thinking of this as more of a garden, obviously that gives us a reason to have leaves in it. Um, let's put that back where it came from. Right, this needs a clean off. My brayer or sheet's looking an absolute mess. Let's just clean this off. So, right. So if I got anything. that will do its job on there. I'm glad to put the yellow on there. I am glad to put the yellow on there. Now I do have um, a new stencil that I've created called Flower Meadow, but I think that's gonna look uh, just a touch too predictable for this. So, Kind of like him where it's got, I've developed that line again. What is it with me and that line? Well, I've got this inside of a tape holder and it's it's not going to be giving me a thick line. It's going to be giving me a thin line. And I think that might be what I need here because if it's too thick, it's going to start to dominate again. And I don't want that. I'm just going to use this forest green. I'm trying to focus more on getting the colors in here that I'm supposed to have in just so I don't forget about them. Well, I'm not sure that did exactly what I was hoping it would do, but it's given me a touch of the green in there, which is fine. What I am going to do though, is I'm going to come in with a clean bit of tissue and I'm going to lift off any excess of that green. Because as you can see up there, hopefully you can see it, it is quite thick and by transferring this across, it might actually transfer that colour paint onto somewhere else. So there you go, that's tidied that up a bit. Let's get this off my plate. I feel this is missing almost a focal point, even though it's just a nondescript, well, it's, it's just a background and I'm, I'm struggling to find out something to pull it together as a coherent thing. And I think, to be honest with you, I think I need to let this dry and then come back to you because I think now I want to pull in some sponging into this. Let's have a little look. I'm not hating it, that's the thing, I just don't know what it needs. It's just because it's so not me. I mean, I, you know me, I tend to, I don't know, what do I tend to do? I'm wondering whether I've got, I think I've got a flower stamp somewhere. Do I think flowers? Sorry, Kerry, Kerry's having a very indecisive day today. I want this to lighten up. It's got some dark green in there, so I have met the criteria. I do think, however, I want to give it a bit of punch of something. And I know I keep going back to yellow and I don't want to do yellow. But what I want to do is I want to do a more vibrant green. So I'm gonna put some of the sap green, which I know is more vibrant in itself and it is a semi-transparent. And I'm gonna mix it with yellow as my little palette knife. So I'm just going to make this a bit more vibrant and I might even add some white to it to make it a bit more, a bit paler. I'm not hating that. I wonder what a little touch of white would do to it. It was more than a touch of white, but we may be adding some green to this again in a minute. So don't don't think that you only have to use the colours you've got, guys. Remember, you're artists. You can mix whatever colour you want. And if it's not the right colour, stick that colour on something else. Right, I think I want to add a little bit of the dark green, but not to that colour. But just on the same plate, because I'm going to come in and do some sponging. And I want a slightly darker shade 
to go along with what I'm using. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of yellow on the other end. that I can bounce between them. So it's a little bit, I'm thinking more light and shade within what I'm doing. Right, so I've just got a bit of household sponge here. Well, I think this is packing sponge, to be honest with you. And I'm gonna bring in my um, little leaves. I think we have to do it down here, first of all, because I'm so desperately trying to rid myself of that. So it's gonna sit on here. I'm gonna pick up bits of paint, not a huge amount of paint, dab off more than you put on. I'm gonna come in, I'm going to pop that on there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop between the dark and the light. And I'm also going to try and be relatively la um, random in my placement of these leaves. I'm hoping I'm improving not. Yeah, OK, that's that's OK. I'm all right with that. And you've seen me do this sponging technique a lot because it's one of my favourite techniques to do. It's, it's a nice way to quickly add something to a design without having to wait a long time for something to dry. I think what I want to do is now I've got that in place. That's giving me the base tone of colour. I need a bit in there or it looks very on the corners only. I think what I'm going to do is add a little bit more yellow to this green mix. So I can add a little more highlight to it and a little bit more white maybe. I'm going to come in now. I'm not going to try and line stuff up with where it was before. I'm never going to manage that. So I'm going to try and add other tones. Now, as I said, I've created this in three different sizes, this stencil, purely because it means I can use it on ATCs, postcards, tags, journal cards, backgrounds, as, as you're seeing here. And I like to have a... I'm liking that now. OK, this is growing on me now. Yes, this is growing on me. Sorry, I sounded a bit negative earlier on about this. It's just sometimes it just your mind just doesn't go with it, but you have to keep at it and and literally work at something until it does work. Or, and I've said this before, if it's not working, admit it's not working and just stop. Um, but give it give it the best try first. Let's get that down there. Right, where am I up to? I think I need a little bit in there and then we're done for the leaves, I feel. I know green and leaves was a little bit predictable. I could have gone for a lizard, I could have gone for a tree, I could have gone for a sea urchin, I could have gone for a fish or a bird or something, but I don't know. I, I, I really did. I love... I love the little leaves mask and I've only just received it because, of course, with the postal delays in this country, it was launched about three weeks ago, I think. And and I've only just received it. So I really wanted to play with this. So I'm liking that. I think that was a darn good choice, Griffiths. Not 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 that I say that far too often. Right. Um, I will clean off this. Now, I do wish I had other stuff out that I could stamp on, to be honest, because I'm, I'm horrified at wasting paint. And I just, yeah, it's just got to be done. Right, that's the majority of that off there. Right, I'm actually liking that a lot. I've definitely got the green involved. The red is in there, but the red isn't punchy enough. And I think I'd like to add the red back in. Now, 
Um, I'm wondering. Now I was going to do a separate video for the next thing I'm going to show you. However, I think, actually let's get rid of the plate because I don't need the plate anymore. It's beginning to get in my way. That'll need a good clean up later. Right, I was going to show you the next thing, but I was going to show it to you in a different video because I was going to do it as a product launch video. But I want to use it now. Looking at this, I really do want to use it now. So I'm going to introduce you to yet another one of my stencil launches. However, this stencil launch is actually at your request. Um, you've seen me use my dots many, many times. You asked me whether I talked to PM Artist Studio about doing it. They said yes. And here you go, guys. It's It's been launched. It's It's on my website. It's on their website. You wanted it. I did it. And what I think I want to do is it comes in three sizes, an 8x10, um, a 5x7 and a 9x12. I think I want to use the 5x7 one. Um, one of the reasons for that is I don't want this to look like Christmas baubles, which is how it could go. And I also don't want it to look like Christmas berries either. But anyway, so that's the other one I launched. Um, and I was going to do it as a separate video, as I said, but I want to use it on here. And I think what I want to do is... I want to put red into this with this and then I think I want to add a touch of black on here as well just to amp it up really really amp up the drama because this is quite a busy piece come on how you come there you go need, need a little bit more than that some of these artesas are beginning to run out I've got to do a paint shop soon I always dread going to my art store because I go with, with mine to buy certain things and then I come out with £50 of paint that I was like, I didn't intend buying that, I just wanted two tubes. Um, I think we all do that, so I'm not going to blame myself totally. Right, you've got a variation of sizes in this. And I think I just want to come in now. As I said, sponge it on, sponge it off. And I'm trying to work in almost an organic shape. And I want to build up the colour. If I've only got a little bit on my sponge as I'm doing this, I'm hardly likely to be forcing it under, under the stencil. Yes, I think that's what this needed. As I said, I want to add some black as well. Um, without making it overly dramatic. I wish to add some black and I might want to put another detail element in here. Right, I'm going to use this opportunity to work on this line that somehow decided it was going to end up in the middle of my piece, much against my disheartenment. Mm, it's beginning to look a little bit like Christmas. I was scared of that, but that's fine. It's it's not Christmas. I don't know why I'm all against Christmas for this. Probably because I had it set in my mind that it wasn't going to be a Christmas piece. Um, if someone in this challenge wants to do a Christmas piece, fabulous. Go for it. Absolutely go for it. It's just I personally didn't want to go for Christmas. Nothing yet Christmas. It just wasn't the time for me. A little bit in there, just one or two ghosts of a dot so this is dainty dots guys this this is the one you asked me to talk to pm artist studio about i'll put a link to dainty dots and i'll put a link to um uh, um, little leaves in the description box which is underneath this video right it's a bit too much paint there i'm not going to be wasting that I'm sure I can get that back in back in the bottle. Is anyone else precious about their paint like I am? There you go. That's a safe chunk of that for another day. Where's the kitchen towel gone? Let's 
just wipe this off. Um, this isn't a dirty cloth, by the way. It's a stained cloth. I use um, face cloths instead of using wet wipes. Me just trying to do my bit for the planet. Right, I want to add a bit of zing or something to this. Really liking where it's going. It is very, very busy. And I want to come in and just add something that's going to just give it a touch of contrast. Now I'm wondering... I quite like the hints of bronze in this. Now was that bronze transparent or not? Give me a second. Right, the bronze is a semi-transparent. I'm wondering whether I could just sponge this into areas. I think I just want to do that. Give it a go. What have I got to lose? It's time, paint and money. No, it's not. It's time, paint and paper. What am I talking about today? I just want to add a little bit so that every layer I put in the foreground helps the background go into the background. Is that, does that make sense to anyone other than me? And I'm turning my piece around so that I'm working in different areas. I have a habit of forgetting about the middle. I tend to work on the edges and the corners because I know I normally forget them. But then what do I do? I forget the middle. So I very much keep turning things around because it catches my eye then. Right, I think this little bit down here can deal with a little bit of the remnants that's on my sponge. Okay, right, I'm all right with that. Right, so I said I was going to add some black. And I'm going to add black for drama. Now I've got circles on there and I've got brick shapes on there. I've got leaf shapes on there. I don't particularly want to... Have I got a leaf stamp? I wonder. Okay, I had a bit of a look round and I don't have a leaf shaped rubber stamp that I'm willing to sacrifice to my mixed media. However, I did come across this. This is a wood block for stamping. And I think I want to use that and try and put it on here. Although I do know from past experience, I need the, the thing to have a little give in it. So I'm going to put this back onto the gel plate. It's a little bit of a softer surface and we're going to go for, it'll have to be black. It's got, I'm looking at this going, what colour can it be? It can only be black in my mind. I mean, hopefully you're not all screaming at the screen going, Kerry, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Sorry guys, I'm going to do it. Right, so I'm going to pick this up, make sure it's got a fair enough piece on it and pop it down. Um, I picked up these wooden stamps um, on eBay. I want to say they were for fabric stamping. Um, I don't know whether it's like batik or something along those lines. I do have several of them. I absolutely love using them and I don't use them enough to be honest. But they are one of the things I reach for. I was going to keep it just in one direction. I'm wondering whether... I think we're going to go down the whole fabric looking thing, to be honest. I'm going to try and not stick my head into the camera. But try and add pieces to the ends of them. Okay, that's working for me. Well, this is so not what I had in mind when I was trying to work out what I was going to do for this. Okay, that's, that's interesting. As I said, not what I planned, but I'm willing to go with a go.
right. I have to have left a piece right in the middle where it needs something. So right in the middle. Okay, these I do tend to wipe off for the sum of reason that if I don't, it builds up again and all the paint can eventually fill in the gaps. Right, are we done? I think we may well be. This this has been a very, very, very busy one. But, okay, it was dark red. We've definitely got dark coloured red and it was dark green. There is dark green in there. Granted, there's light green as well. But there is dark green in there. It's not something I would normally have done. It's, it's, it was a challenge. It was definitely, definitely a challenge. I do think the black was the right call though. I'm wondering. I'm thinking I uh, take my sponge, take a bit of the black and actually do what I would do normally with the Distress Ink and let's almost vignette it. I think you'll you'll see more when I actually take it off this. You'll see where I'm going with this. I mean I might do it all the way along the edges to be honest. I'm, I'm unsure at the moment. It's sort of just framing it out. Actually I do like this right let's really quickly go around the edges and then I think we're definitely going to say enough is enough Griffiths because I think what I'll do is I will keep playing and playing and then all of a sudden I will lose what we've achieved which I must admit was hard won today um, and I don't want to lose it I want to keep what we've done it does have a slightly almost Asian feel to this. Is it Asian or Indian or? I, I don't know. Right, let's stop faffing around. Faffing means messing for my American friends. Right, let's just get that off my brayer before it decides it's going to stick to it forever in a day. Right, let me just take this plate out of the way let me take this plate and put it up there let's see if I can find a clean bit of this cloth I, it's not going to be a perfectly clean background for you because this this surface has been stained so badly it's never going to be clean again but you know what I'm an artist I make a mess I think you have to make a mess to make art and there there it is finished Okay, we all know that wasn't easy. And if anyone's having a go at this, go with your gut. But what I would say is go with your gut, but go outside the box because this, this is a tough colour combination to use if you're avoiding Christmas. And I was definitely avoiding Christmas. So, um... Hmm... I was thinking, this, I won't be doing this because this isn't a me thing, but I think if you were someone who actually was good at doodling, you could come with a Posca pen and actually pull those leaves forward by going around them in a really fine black. I'm not going to be doing that, but there you go. So hopefully you enjoyed that, guys. Um, I can't remember what next, next month's challenge is, but I'm hopefully it's not going to be anywhere near as hard as that one was. So enough from me. I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. Until next time. Bye-bye, guys.